for Shangela. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, am I going up there? Oh, yes, shit. Ma'am. How y'all doing? <laughs> I know, right? Okay. Uh, we're still waiting for the other two, so Shangela's going to keep Oh, company. let it be. Bitch, what, am I early? Yes, bitch. You know, I heard there was a video going around about me being not early. <laughs> so please, if you have your phones, Mark this on Instagram. You know how you can put the time on it? <laughs> put the time on it. A bitch was early, okay? <laughs> no, fuck the hoes. Come on, we sitting in the middle, bitch. We gotta sit together. Come on. Let's do it. How y'all uh, doing? How y'all doing tonight? We, it is completely packed in here, Shangela. Oh, I All love the way it. to the front. It's fucking Ooh. insane tonight. And thank God, good, the, the more there are of us, the warmer it is, okay, bitch? <laughs> And I came to bring the heat tonight back to Chicago, all right? <laughs> uh, what's new with you? We haven't seen you since A Star is Born. Oh. I feel like I'm here all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you saw the film, anybody saw the movie A Star is Born? Good, me too, a number of times, bitch, okay? <laughs> at, this, at this point, sis, it's basically a sing-along for me, okay? <laughs> I know all the music, I love it. Um, since then, you know, I left you guys, market days. I went on last year and finished the largest single queen tour of any drag queen yes. from RuPaul's Drag Race history. <laughs> I did 184 cities around Holy the world, and then we came, yeah, I know, bitch, that bitch a damn, I know. I was there. What's your favorite city? Uh, you know what? Every city's different, but I'd never been to Asia before uh, to perform in places like Thailand and Singapore and Hong Kong. And bitch, even if people don't know English, which in Singapore, English is one of the primary languages, but even if they don't, they know Kitty Girl verse, okay? Really? <laughs> bitch, they'd be like, step aside, I'm back again. I was like, yes, ah! bitch! <laughs> Couldn't tell me where the bathroom was, but bitch, I knew the first. <laughs> yes. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, baby. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Go ahead. I don't know. Oh, yeah. That's about it. And now I'm back in L.A. just working. You know, we've been on the promotional circuit for A Star is Born. You may have seen a bitch at the Golden Globes after parties at the Yo. SAG Awards. And coming up, a bitch is going to the Oscars. <laughs> Have we ever yeah. had have we ever had drag queens at the Oscars before? Well, this time I don't know where I'm gonna be. I might be in the bathroom as the attendant handing out bubble gum <laughs> and shit, but I don't care what they say, bitch. I'm gonna find a way in. I'm Shangela. <laughs> say what? <laughs> Seriously, this is the first time that drag queens have been on like red carpets for fucking movie season. Well, you know, it's, it's just all awesome. Stars. Oh, are we there? Are y'all ready oh, to do this? Sex and the kitty girl. All right, hit it. it. Welcome Adore Delano and Valentina. Hi. How's it going? We haven't seen you in a while. Uh, uh, Adore, what's new with you? Uh, I've just been writing a lot lately. I've been like just growing pubic hair at home and just. Great. <laughs> We've seen it on Instagram, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> New album coming soon? Uh, not an album. I'm just releasing singles this, this year, but next year probably an album. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Welcome Shit. back, bitch. Thanks. Uh, Valentina, star of Rent. Yes. What's new with you, girl? I've just been relaxing at home after working so hard for so yes. long. But, girl, I came out in drag tonight. How we doing, Chicago? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> uh, so tell us about Rent. How did you did you have a lot of fun doing that? Did it stress you out? Have you done like live? Th have you done theater before? Uh, I did a bit in high school, but yeah. it was the most amazing experience to be like this product of Hollywood to have just vocal training and have yeah. like a physical therapist and a whole team for Angel to do my quick changes and to be in just a studio lot every single day, just like dancing and singing and just learning from a director, which I've never worked with a director so closely before to channel so much energy. And it was really a beautiful experience. That, yes. You know, on top of everything that I got to experience, all those experiences, I'm sure like with doing the movie, it's like it, nothing could ever pay for the experience of being there and being a part of something that like motivates you to want more for yourself, to continue to like, have like the trailer that you could just like relax and like, oh bitch, this is nice, girl. Oh shit. 
And I've got to say, you know, in watching it, I think I speak for a lot of people in that we were so proud of you on the show. Not only, we know the <laughs> amount of work. Yes, Rich. The amount of work that you put into it. Nobody will ever know how much time it takes to build and for it to be live in one take. And the fact that we had drag representation and good drag representation on yes. television, on Fox, bitch. Hallelujah. Good job, sister. Fox, bitch. It was very beautiful to watch. It was. I was very proud of you on oh, that moment. Thank you so much. Around. Unfortunately, it wasn't all live, though. That is what? Half, I know. <laughs> bitch, I want my money I back, know. bitch. I know, girl. <laughs> One, one of our co-stars, Brendan Hunt, he injured himself on the final dress rehearsal. He broke his foot. So what was that like? How did the cast prepare? I mean, did they just say, hey, he broke his... Uh, like, were you all there well, when it happened? we didn't even know. A oh. lot of us didn't even know. And the next morning, we came in ready to give it our all. And they were like, you guys, it's not going to happen today. Uh, yeah. I would have been so, so fucking pissed. I'm sorry. You're so yeah. sweet. Uh, I would have been like, fuck you guys! I've been fucking studying for months! <laughs> what's it, what's, what was what was live? Um, just like the last, like the maybe last like part. the last like eight minutes or something. Oh wow! Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. Why don't they have understudies? I mean, I know that these are like big famous people I'm that not they have, sure, right? But, like you would think they would. But you know, it, it's it's really unfortunate. I mean, I can't even imagine what it's like to be Brendan to know like he broke his foot, and then the live never got to happen. I so mean, I don't want to say nothing, yeah. but I broke a leg on stage, okay, <laughs> bitch? And I still finished the number as a professional. I was rolled out on a gurney through the dance floor taking selfies on the way to the hospital, okay, bitch? I heard your bone was punctured through your skin. It is, but it didn't break through the hose because, you know, I wear support hose, okay? <laughs> so... Hallelujah. <laughs> the Capizio got you together, yeah. bitch. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> like that. Um, so have, uh, have y'all been watching the season? Oh, yes. 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 Who are watching. you rooting for? Who do you guys want to win tonight? Valentina. Yes. <laughs> Girl, you know in my French vanilla fantasy, I already won. <laughs> oh, we're back. <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right. Uh, I'm going to ask the audience, uh, who do you guys think is going to win so far? Uh, if you think a Trinity is going to win tonight, make some noise. All right, uh, team uh, Monet Exchange. Okay, all right. Uh, Naomi Smalls. Okay, you were honest. It's fine. Monique Hart. All right, so the, I got nothing from that, yeah. Valentina, if you had to predict the future of who we're going to be celebrating in an hour, who do you think is going to take this home tonight? Me. <laughs> um, no, I'm fine with all of them, to be honest. Yeah, like, but if you had to make a decision. Well, but I don't have to. I just get to sit back and watch. Bitch, I'm not the competition, girl. I just spent a week in Guadalajara <laughs> drinking tequila with the world's most finest men. <laughs> Girl, besides I'm Chicago, besides Chicago, yes. <laughs> well, we're gonna find out at this meet and greet. Ah. You know, I've never had sex and drag. Wow. Not yet. <laughs> what? Is I it have cool? twice for money, but it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't for fun, and it sucked. Was but, it before Drag Race? Or? Oh yeah, I used to be a cam model. I sold myself. It was a party. Was, was, was it? The <laughs> I haven't even started fantasy? drinking yet. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Um, Ajor, who do you think is going to win tonight? Who do you think is going to win? It doesn't have to be your favorite. It doesn't have to be just what do you think is going to happen. Well, Ruse wins every year. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I um, Maybe Trinity. But I, 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 want, I like Naomi just because I watched her like grow right. up and I just love her. You did competitions with her back in the day, right? Yeah, like I like she like, used to run around with a girl named um Anita Mortuary and they were stunning and really she was like a gothic Naomi. It was like they were they were really cool, but it was like, like you and her and Laganja all doing like the same competition well, shows. We right? were we were a little or, we were like seniors in high school while she was a freshman. Yeah. 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 So was I. <laughs> I think dropped out. Uh, Shangela, what do you think is going to happen at the end of this episode? Oh, it's going to be a stunt, bitch. Yeah. You know it. I don't do you know. Think? You know what? You never know. I would love to say I might come up back in a box at the very end and say, <laughs> bitch, where's my check? Okay? But, but you never know what's going to happen with these. I just know in watching this and watching them rehearse, like, 
when you get the choreography for the finale with Todrick, it's just in your head, you go home at night, bitch, you don't sleep the night before, because you're not, I'm not gonna fuck this up, because when you learn it, we have a very short amount of time to learn choreography in, and Todrick teaches like, one, two, da, da, five. good, you good, you good, you got it, and you'll be like, I don't got it, bitch. But you have to like fake it and pretend it, whatever. But um, I know none of these girls got sleep the night before. Looking at that choreography, bitch, here we go. Hallelujah. All right, let's do it. What? Is there more to this? I, I feel like there's more to this. I'm scared. Yeah, I don't know. I told y'all there was going to be a stunt, bitch. Oh. I told y'all that Nancy Drew was getting to the bottom of it, bitch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here, uh, raise your glasses. Let's do a, a cheers. Oh, a cheers. Everybody, if you have a glass, raise it up. If you don't, I understand, bitch. The first is coming. Uh, all right. Valentina's drinking uh, tea Eye because contact. she's under the weather. Cheers, guys. Thank you for coming out tonight. It's the fucking finale. Let's do this. Cheers. Blessed be. It's just chamomile tea with honey. It's just honey. <laughs> it's honey. Oh, mm, 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 mm. Okay. Now, I know somebody out here. Hold on. What? Now, I didn't get to say who I thought was going to win earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. I skipped it. the question, but I, I feel it's only right that I share my opinion, right? Y'all ready? Okay, so tonight, you know, looking at it, I love everybody. Everybody knows I live for Monique. That's my homegirl. I love Naomi. I love Trinity. Monet and I have spent a lot of time together. I love her. But tonight, based on the based on the competition, I don't know how they're going to do in this finale, though, because, you know, it's all about how you perform in this, and now that these other girls are back to make a decision, well, we know how that goes. But anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Didn't they learn their lesson the first time? <laughs> no, you know what, though? If regardless of all that, I think everybody is going to be a winner, period. But tonight, I think the crown may be going on Monet Exchange's head, okay? And look, I know Trendy is sickening, and she turned it out, and I know so is Monique, and so is um, Naomi. But I feel like in this competition, Monet has had like that trajectory of growth where you feel like, okay, yeah. bitch, you came in, you were struggling, and then you did the climb, yeah. and you pushed through, and she's confident. And even though, you know, she was going to send Manila home too, which I was like, damn, why y'all got to do Manila like that? <laughs> but, <laughs> but even still, I feel like she's done a, a really great job in this competition and that she has shown an, a, a tremendous amount of growth. And uh, I just feel like she'll carry on a great legacy as well and she also owes me some money so if she win the check I'm gonna get my money back bitch <laughs> so hallelujah I would be okay anybody with that. agree with me yeah I would damn be okay with that. none of y'all hoes though huh <laughs> <laughs> um, would any of y'all ever go back I mean not next season but like down the line in like two or three years as an executive producer <laughs> <laughs> I mean yeah Shangela's Drag Race I see it Wait a hold on, don't say that, bitch. You know RuPaul is listening, bitch. She got more probes than the FBI, bitch. <laughs> She's watching you through fucking yes, iPhoto. <laughs> she is. Turn your phone off, bitch. She's looking at us right now. You mentioned her name, you owe her $20. It's true. <laughs> You know, I thought it'd be really fun if they would, like, bring us on to, like, create challenges for, like, future yeah. seasons. Yeah. Like, because I, some of the challenges, I feel, can be a little whack. Like this, oh, we're like, back! Ooh. Oh! Uh, oh, all right, so Shangela, what were, you, what were you... Oh, I was gonna ask, you know, I know we're up here talking to each other, but you know, sometimes we wanna know, what do y'all, what do y'all think? What are some of your favorite moments of this season? Because it's been an interesting season. Wait, you, you know you're Mexican, but what? But I don't know how to clean. Oh, shit. <laughs> Girl, I'm very high glam, but when it comes to like being a tidy person, y'all should see my room. My God, girl. I'm sorry to interrupt you, ladies, but I have to say this: my blood is boiling. And <laughs> girl, I still don't know who was she. <laughs> Do y'all know who she was? Oh, who was the, the, the judge? Do you remember the episode What's her name? that Valentina oh, had on the paper design dress? No, it was a lot. It's paper. It's okay. the stitches and. It was the girl yeah. from Community, right? <laughs> no, Yvette Nicole her. Brown. That was in the not gold her. with the bun. No, was, she girl said with the bun. that judge with the <laughs> bun. The, in the gold she, with the bun. You were bothered, bitch. Uh -huh. You were stressed. Yes. Why? Because <laughs> there was nothing constructive. She was just like, I don't get it. 
Oh, damn. But girl, and if you're going to sit there and be an expert, well, how can I improve? And that's why I think we should have ex-drag race girls as right. judge or, or yeah. contributors. Yeah. Bitch, we've been through the gig. We yeah. know what it's about. And even though we don't want to sometimes give harsh criticism to our sisters if we know them, <laughs> but a new crop of girls, oh, we'll read the shit out of them. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but we know what it, you know, we know what it takes and what it involves to be in this moment. So if you support us being back as judges or contributors, make some noise. Yeah, you film that. Take tag at World of Wonder, okay? Thank you. <laughs> at WoW Report. <laughs> Uh, Valentina, was you were just saying that before we went to uh, commercial. You would like to put together challenges and be a part of production? Yeah, it would be so fun to bring a lot of the creative girls together to like create, like brainstorm and create fun challenges that have never been done. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of stuff is like repeating itself or it's yeah. just like, it's just like recycling the same people doing the same things. But if we were to come in with some really crazy, like fresh ideas, yeah, and it could that really we've be fun. From the road. Yeah. And things that we've gone through, like getting to a city and your bag's not showing up. Oh. And you got to get in drag only with the items that they give you from the front desk <laughs> of the hotel, yeah. bitch. Okay. <laughs> you got to shave your body with those disposable razors oh. that they give you all cold and shit. Yep. Now that's a challenge, bitch. That's a challenge. <laughs> Hell, a Uber. Get in drag in the back of a taxi in London while that bitch is rolling. You like this? Whoa! I told that man, baby, can you warn me when we're gonna do a stop light so I can get this liquid liner together? Don't drive to the <laughs> liquid liners. <laughs> Shangela, coming off of a 389 city tour, uh, what is the what's the craziest fucking thing that's happened on tour? Oh my gosh, um, it's always it's always a ride. It's always crazy. I think. I mean, there's always crazy stuff. I think the only thing that sticks out in my mind, and maybe I don't remember because I drank in every city, bitch, um, <laughs> is, is I'm a par I like to go out. I'm a party kind of girl. Yep. And these girls know we've been on tour together. I love to go out after the gig. And so it, in 184 cities, I think I went to 184 clubs. So the craziest <laughs> thing that happened is me making it to the airport and to the gig right. the next day and still doing it, a meet and greet, 100 people, yep. a two-hour show, and still going to the club after, right? Yeah. She shows up on the plane the last minute. Like, Hallelujah. <laughs> that's what that's what Kimchi said. She's like, you would love Shangela. She goes to every club until the latest night. Uh, and then she hangs out with all of the owners of the clubs. And then the call time is at 6 a.m. And she's there. It's crazy. <laughs> I was like, I love that about you. <laughs> Relatable. I yeah. like that. <laughs> Are you the same way? I'm the same Stay way. Stay out yeah. until the last possible second I, and just be there when you have to. I won't even sleep sometimes, but I do party with the owners as well, and I'm like, it's your fault if I miss this. <laughs> yeah. So I make them fight. I'm like, oh, so-and-so didn't, you know, I was partying with them, so I blame him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question. Did anyone know that about uh, Monique Hart being 300 pounds? No. And then being, I had no idea. Or uh, she was the Lee, what was it? She was like the one of the conversion camp or whatever. Yeah, well, you know, her mom is a, a, um, pastor. a pastor. So yeah. I'm sure that kind of ideology was ingrained in her as a kid. Yeah. And being someone who was raised in a Southern Baptist home in Paris, Texas, I know about, you know, <laughs> being a, a church kid. And that's kind of like... You can't, like, hallelujah, this sh bitch, I'll meet you in the shallow, okay? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh, we're back! Fuck it. All right! All right, what do we think, ladies? I think what? they should have opened for the Grammys. That was stunning. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was cool. I mean, the fucking production. I yeah. love Alaska's Missing Tooth. Every time they went to Trixie, just like a dork. Like, what kind of family band is this? <laughs> like, at the airport, playing folk songs? Like, what is this? I would have been like, why are these hoes in my video, bitch? <laughs> this is our moment, top four, but they were lovely. Everybody was lovely. <laughs> they were lovely. <laughs> I would want the screen time, bitch. It's our number. But you know what? Um, I think that everyone stepped up with the choreography. The looks are everything. I think it's difficult. It was hard for me because... Well, I'm a big fan of the song Kitty Girl, okay? Hallelujah. Yeah. This song was like a band, a cover band version. Yeah. So that had to be a little harder to work with. But And there were so many elements. There's smoke. <laughs> there's like dancers all around you. There's dark. I don't know. I it wasn't as flashy as the last couple. Couple, yeah. Yeah. To me personally, I thought the girls turned it out. 
Let me yeah. give them that. And I love Trinity's outfit. Oh my god. Yeah. With the headpiece, bitch, to do all that choreography with a headpiece on. Yeah. She looked great. Yeah. And why was Naomi's verse half of everyone else's verse? Right. She was like the posh spice. I was like, what? <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> rude. <posh> spice. <laughs> to be fair, she kind of is the posh spice of this whole thing. Yeah. Where's Ginger? <laughs> I feel like I feel like they made them make all that happen in like one day but they yeah. could have gave him like another day to like refine it and make it more intricate and stuff like I just feel like it was really rushed yeah. I feel like everybody needed to like have more rehearsal be more like connected to their movement yeah. and their verses and deliver because it looks like it just came together really fast for them and if they were to have more time to refine everything with rehearsal I think it could have been so much more entertaining I know and yeah. it's not on the queens I think it's just limited amount of time that they yeah. had to make that happen I'm sure and yeah. I don't even know the tea because I don't know what was going on and what made it really difficult I think is that everyone in that video to me performed, performed lovely yeah. they yeah. did their part so I honestly at this point Besides reading spoilers online, which I try not to do, I don't know who's gonna be top two, and I don't know who's really yeah. gonna win this. Oh, I'm so nervous. Oh no, you're not. Look at you. Uh, what do y'all think? We're watching this together, bitch. Anybody else? Yeah. Valentina's gonna win. Yep, that's yeah. what they think. <laughs> Crown it. If Monet, I love Monet, but if that bitch bring out one more sponge, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> We got it, bitch. You soak it up. If she don't get a, de a, a sponsorship from those green and yellow people with the sponges, bitch, if she don't have a commercial, fuck Pepsi. If that bitch don't have a sponge sponsorship after all this sponsorship all season, she make a bitch want to go clean the floor or something. I love it. <laughs> um, uh, well, I have a question. Do you, any of you know any of the uh, season 11 girls? Yes. Yes. Any, yeah, who are you excited to see on season 11? Evie was in my video for Negative Nancy. Oh, yes! yes. I, I've known her for a while. She is, she's a really, 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 really interesting queen, and I don't think we've seen somebody like her yet. She's, she's wild. Of, she's like Naomi, but like on acid and Sharon's baby. Like, it's like, yeah. it's weird. She's like dirty punk rock, like But like hot avant-garde, though. With, it's weird. <laughs> All right, let's do it! Who were some of your favorite looks? I mean, Naomi for me, I mean, that was my yeah. favorite. Yeah. I, I feel like we have some Trinity fans in the audience. They were like going, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that dress looks like one Amazing. of a kind. Yeah. They're just like the way that it's built, you can tell yeah. that it's built onto corsetry and it sits yeah. on top. The way that it's draped, it's just gorgeous. The way every, all the panels match and it's just fucking orgasmic. I don't even think I needed the teacup reveal. It was still like, yeah, right? Like, I could have had none of that, and I was like, oh, that's still beautiful. It's made by Anthony Canny, the person that made by the Tchotchkes finale. Oh. Ball, like, ball Oh, gown. my God. Yes. With uh -huh. the spider on the head, that mm -hmm. one? Oh, oh my loved God. It. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Love gorgeous. that look. Uh, do we like all of them? Yeah. Monet. Oh, Monet's was great. What do you think? What do you think? Oh, no, I don't know anything about fashion. Don't ask me. <laughs> Well, that's why we want to hear your opinion, yeah. I like Naomi, but, I mean, because I'm, like, purple. <laughs> <laughs> no, she looked beautiful. Um, I like Trinity and Naomi the, the, the best, but, yeah. I mean, I think Monet is such a fucking star. Like, every yeah. time she steps on, I'm just, like, she's just so, like, she can fit perfectly in that, that whole, like, all-star gig, I guess. Yeah. Also, like, I think what we've learned is... Uh, Monique Hart is so good at reality TV, and I just want to see yes, her on reality really TV is. more and more and more. She's like you, Shangela. She's been, yeah, I love her. She actually works with us with Say What Entertainment, the drag management company oh, okay. that I run. Yes. And she um, she has one of those personalities that's just attractive, infectious. You just go to it. You, I mean, this season, I hope I'm telling the truth on this, and my feelings, she narrated mostly the whole damn season. Yeah, she did. She and really I love hearing chorus. her. And don't yeah. get me to singing Brown Cow Stunning coming to every nation. I, I can't stand that fucking cow, bitch, but I love the song. <laughs> uh, I love cows. I want, I want two pet cows. I've been saying that since I was a kid, so you can look it up. I'm not just saying that because I love her. Okay? You can raise them as dogs. 
And they, like, really. And they can, like, cuddle you and everything. Look it up on YouTube if you think I'm lying. Have you, if you ever have, if you have YouTube read, uh, me, Courtney Act, and Laganja were on this show, The Try Guys. We did, like, a competition yeah. on their show. And what we were on a farm, and we had to milk a cow. That's hot. And get the, in drag, bitch. There we are. And <laughs> I got, yeah, bitch, I got swatted in the face with the cow's tail, because as you're, you know, pulling on her pussy, basically. <laughs> Excuse me, I didn't mean to, you know. But you just, that's a... Is I think you were milking the cow incorrectly. Oh! Eek. You're supposed to pull the nipples. Yeah. Oh, bitch! Oh, oh man. Oh, God. No wonder she you swatted still, me, girl. Yeah, you still had a wet hand at the end of it, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Oh, don't! Dr I hope you didn't drink it. Yeah. Which I'll be shaking with everyone in the meet and greet. Come on through. <laughs> Good old cow pussy hand. Yes, <laughs> lovely. Whoa. <laughs> so gross. I love pussy too. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Guess I'm crowd. alone here. <laughs> wrong crowd, sister. Wrong crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pin drop, bitch. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, wait, uh, is there anyone else uh, from uh, season 11 that you're excited to see? Oh, that you um, guys have worked I, with? I, of course, I love Vanjie. Oh, hey, welcome back. Nina! Uh, I personally think it sounds like it's between Monet and Trinity. Same. Bitch, you would have to be deaf not to know it's between <laughs> yeah. Monet. They, girl, I was up here telling uh, a door. Yep, that's the goodbye speech, bitch. <laughs> when they say she was lovely, but she still has a little bit, or they say yeah. uh, she's gonna have a lovely career yeah. after this. Oh, she doesn't yep. need this. Goodbye. Girl. <laughs> We're good. We're good. Shandra. Oh, I know, bitch. Oh no, they didn't give me that speech. Trust me, bitch. I had the she's love. I I'll take it real quick. So I'm on stage, right? And they're going judge to judge, and you know I know that the eliminated girls. I, I was like, oh, bitch, it's a wrap. But anyhow. So they're going, and the judges are like, Shangela, you know, we see you, you're on stage. We don't even look at the other queens. Our eyes go directly to you. And I'm looking at these bitches like this. Oh, really? <laughs> they were like, oh, really? Oh, really? I was like, oh, fuck, shut up. But anyhow, yeah. They did, they did similar with me on All Stars, too. They didn't air it, but Rue was like, you, and I was so fucking like, these bitches are going to fuck me up backstage. <laughs> I went on, they're like, oh, with your career, you don't even need this show. And all the girls looked oh, at me like. God. <laughs> and I went. Mom, I'm coming home. Fuck yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that, bitch. I gotta work with these hoes after. <laughs> and bunks and shit. Shangela, when they brought back the jury, were you like, oh, fuck, this is fucked up? Oh, yeah, I knew it. Well, here's the deal. The jury was six people, right? Yeah. Three out of the six, bitch, I had sent to the house. Yeah. Okay, so that's already 50%. And you know, black people in juries never work really very well anyway. So... Oh, you know, you know, Did, we, we, we know, we know. Do you, do you think production thought about that? Or are they like, ooh, this is going to be a fun, stunty ending? Or do you think they realize, like, we're fucking over Shangela? No, I don't think they did that necessarily on purpose. No. I think that was their plan to do. I don't think it was maybe the best plan. As no. you see, it didn't happen again, thankfully. But you know what? It, it, all, everything that happens in life, it happens. So it's not about what happens to you. It's how you rise above after yes. it, okay? And honestly, had I not had that moment, had that particular journey not been mine, I wouldn't be right here today living my absolute right. best life right. in so many things. So you know what? Looking back on it, I ain't got no hard feelings on the girls. I'll still loan them $5, bitch. Hallelujah. <laughs> how do you feel, Valentina? I feel really great. I think reflecting on just seeing, like, Rue give each one of those girls so much kind of like praise and attention. It makes me feel like, oh, what? well, I'm still wondering, what does Rue really think of me, you know? Yeah. But yeah, like I think like, oh my God, like what must it feel like to get that far? Because when I did season nine, I left in seventh place. And then when I left All Stars, I left in seventh place again. Oh. So it's just kind of like really repetitive. So like- I feel like honestly, and I'm gonna tell you this, and I probably told you this when just us talking, but you are a winner this yeah. season, bitch. Trust me. And you, you got, were a winner on your right, season as well. You. So that's star fucking power, bitch. You got yeah. the full redemption. You came back. Yeah. You came back. You knew all the words. You lip synced lovely. You looked gorgeous every single time. And bitch, trust me, in your head, you getting a crown tonight. So, Right. I, <laughs> right. 
Thank you. Thank yeah. you right. so much. They let you they let you dip out early, but bitch, you were still considered in the top of the heap. I yeah. wanna know what your speech was gonna be, because you know yes. they, we all wait for that moment. So we all have a speech. Yes. I think we should if no it, it better not come back. Valentina. We Val have, let me do Ruth. Let me do Ruth. <laughs> Valentina. <laughs> That's better than Trixie. Uh, <laughs> look, I blame y'all. Look, uh, <laughs> Valentina, why should you be the next all star? I mean, I'm, I, I'm not, bitch, I'm not going to do it. I'm not prepared. But I would probably start by saying, I'll look Ruth straight in the eyes and I'll say, Mi amor. <laughs> <laughs> And then I would have already won right there. Right. Just with that. Bitch, Not, if you gave the whole speech in Spanish, you would have won the right. pageant, bitch. <laughs> bitch, and they would have had to put the subtitles. Yes, yes. Oh my God. You know, we have to do that sometimes when you're speaking in English. But anyway, bitch. <laughs> Dear Lord. We having a good time tonight, right? Yes. Shit, I didn't come all the way to 40 degrees not to have a party, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Available at the merch table later. Hallelujah. Um, all right, so after this, we're going to have a Q&A so you guys can ask whatever you want. Uh, and then uh, we are going to have a meet and greet at 10 o'clock. Uh, how much is it? Oh, it's sold out. Sorry, bitch. Oh, uh, sorry. And then we're, but but you know, it's not sold out. Uh, you can stick around. We have performances at eleven and twelve. Oh, and we're back. Let's crown it. Hey! The next All Star to be inducted into the Drag Race Hall of Fame is, for the first time in All Stars history, you are both winners, baby. We have a tie. Winner, winner, two chicken dinners. You each win $100,000. Oh, my God, guys. <laughs> All right, what do we think, ladies? Does anyone not think that we should have had a double win? Me. Yeah. What do you... Th I don't think that they should have tied. No. no. Cause sure they both get a hundred thousand, but two hundred thousand is so much better. Wait, do you win two hundred thousand at no, the end of just it? <laughs> oh, so they both got two. Okay, well then, cool. Yeah. Well, but still, one of them should have won. What yeah. do you, What do you guys think? I feel confused. I don't yeah. know how to feel. Like I feel like. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, good like, for both of them. It's like, like when Miss Doubtfire re revealed herself and, and <laughs> Sally Field's like, the whole time? The whole time? Yeah. It's like, if I would have known this. <laughs> if I would have known this. <laughs> Sorry, sis, we couldn't let you slide, bitch. Oh, no, I don't let myself slide. I'm all with it, girl. <laughs> to be candid, I, I really do think one of the running problems with All Stars, and I mean, it's a fabulous show, but something that kind of dogs it is the fact that they don't always want to make decisions yeah. so they want to hand it off to the queens because I think that they did feel the heat from the fans and so sometimes Rue bless her if you're watching this God bless you um, I think she kind of like kind of shuffles back into the shadows and goes I don't know y'all fight amongst yourselves and I do think that it was a cop out yeah. I agree. Yes. It was fabulous TV. And yes, they do make fabulous TV. And, and eight times a season we hear for the first time in Drag Race history. But sometimes I want to watch a competition from beginning to end. And it just has a result. And, you know. Well, and everyone knows when you sign up for that type of competition reality show or just a competition period, there's a chance you're gonna, they're going to be winners and there are going to be people that don't win. Yeah. And I've been in that category of don't win many times. <laughs> Okay, the show. Oh, bitch, you know I'm winning. But, <laughs> but even still, I think it is important to have a winner make the tough decisions. Cause also for the winner, when you tie with someone, it's great. Now, no, I love both those girls, Monet yeah. and Trinity. I'm so proud. But as a person who works so hard, sometimes you're like, you know what? If I lost, just tell me, bitch, I lost. Yeah. Right. Because I think there should be one winner just one winner that's my personal yeah. opinion i do i do want to say like both of them fucking killed it this season yeah. 
Like, this was fabulous. But, yeah, sometimes it does feel like I didn't fully nut, you know? Yeah. Right? Like, I'm right. just like, yeah, okay, but, like, what's next week? Are we finding yeah. out who actually won? They, like, edged us. Yeah. 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 It was a fucking great season, though, I have to say. Yes. Yeah. Girl, yeah. it's like the Christmas spectacular when everybody got a crown, bitch. I was standing there, and Rue was like Oprah Winfrey, like, you get a crown, you get a crown, you get a crown. I was like... Oh, hold up now, bitch. I spent a lot of money on this outfit. Hold on. We need one winner. I only came back for one reason, bitch. It was my crown. <laughs> um, well, as you guys know, we were actually supposed to originally have uh, Trinity and Monet here with us tonight. Uh, and they couldn't be here because of contractual obligations. Uh, so uh, the girls filled in. So a big thank you. Um, but we actually uh, do have something special. Uh, DJ, hit it. A surprise? Oh, look at that! Hey, Roscoes, it's Trinity the Tuck. And Monet Exchange! We're so excited for you guys to watch the episode. I know. Um, listen, we're sorry that we can't be there, but bitch, we both winners, we both get the money. Amen. Yes! Come on! <laughs> Well, you know what? Bitch, we about to have a good time. I Bitch. love them. That was lovely. Okay, yes. give it up for Monet right. and Trinity, please. <laughs> but we're going to have a good show tonight, too. Are y'all more excited about that? Yeah. Okay, I, Tranica, we need, we need no. Chicago to get hyped. Baby, bring me, bring me about six of those shots, please. <laughs> and, and put it on Monet and Trinity's tabs since they're right. out of money. <laughs> Right, that's a double tap. We about to give out some shots tonight. Y'all gonna have to liven the fuck up, okay? Well, well, we're oh, well, wonder. we're gonna do a we're gonna do a Q and A, and then we're gonna have the meet and greet attendance. I ain't answering shit till I get a shot. Okay, okay. No, I'm kidding. I'm playing. <laughs> All right, listen. All right, we have some uh, drag race merch. So if you have a question, I'll walk around and give you some merch. Giveaway, uh, it ain't mine. Um. All right. Hello. What's your question? So. Game of Thrones will not leave you guessing who's gonna take it. Who do you think is gonna take it? Nick, Nick, where's Nick? Nick, go to my suitcase real quick, baby, and get the t-shirt, the t-shirt. Yeah, the, the Game of Thrones one. I have a new Game of Thrones t-shirt that we're launching like within like two weeks, bitch. So that just reminded me, I forgot about my t-shirt. You know, I gotta sell shit because I didn't win. So anyhow, but, but who do you, what, what was your question, baby? Who do you think? Who do you think is gonna win? Who's oh, gonna it's it? gonna be Daenerys Stormborn, the mother of dragons, bitch. Now, I, I don't trust that Cersei Lannister. I love her to death, and she's very entertaining. Some, somebody in here is like, what the fuck are they talking about? But Me! <laughs> you haven't seen Game of Thrones? Not one episode. Oh, come <laughs> over! Come over, I got yeah. an HBO pass. I'm bitch. down, yeah. I'm down. Yeah, come on. And then we can watch Have South Park marathons. It? Oh, shit. <laughs> Have you seen Game of Thrones? No, I was watching La Casa de las Flores. I saw that. Oh. I saw that too. That's the one where the girl talks real slow in Spanish, so for some reason. Oh, mama, no, no sé qué está pasando. Ay, no es mi papá. <laughs> Passion. <laughs> All right, hello, what's your question? Hi, obviously there's been a lot of queens on RuPaul's Drag Race, but is there any queens that you guys can pick right offhand that you think deserves it, like, on the next um, season of All Stars? Like, if y'all don't say my Ivy name, I'm like, everybody. Person. Tammy Brown. Yeah. <laughs> I yes. love Tammy Brown. She's your favorite, Valentina. I love she? her. You know, sometimes they go with, for All Stars, they... A lot of times they pick just girls me? based on not only their talent, but also their followings. I wish they would go sometimes just to pick also some girls that don't have a strong, maybe have a following yeah. or a social media pre presence from the early seasons. Where the fuck is Akasha, okay? Oh my God, I was I want to see that. Akasha. I want to see, I want to see um, who the, Mariah Paris Balenciaga, right. my yes. girl. You know, I w put Stacey's ass back again. Bring Stacey. I l I'm just naming girls from my season. I ran into Akasha recently. I haven't seen her in a while. I was thinking the same thing. Why aren't they putting people like that on, like from the yeah. first season, second season? Angina comes to bring Angina. the great party as well. Yeah. I love Nina Flowers. Yes, oh, Nina. Nina. So, yeah, Flowers. we have, we obviously have girls. <laughs> All right. Bitch, we said it. Where were you at the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello. What's your question? Hi, how are you? Valentina, I come from Margarita Island in Venezuela. 
And I want to ask, why did you decide to represent our country through Miss Venezuela? Because Venezuela has the most titles in all beauty pageants across the world. And yes. when Miss Venezuela walks into the room in any competition, you know that she's that bitch, that she's prepared. Oh. She went through the system of Osmel Sosa and she's ready to win the crown. And it is her life and it is her dream. And every little girl in Venezuela grows up wanting to be Miss Venezuela. And anytime I enter a competition, that's how I feel too, girl. So, yeah. arriba mi gente de Venezuela. <laughs> Valentina, congrats on your many wins against Farah, but this is for Adora and Shangela. Who do you think y'all would have taken out in the Lollapalooza? Who would That's have the taken first out? episode? No, 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 no. no. Oh, shit. The Lollapalooza, where it was... <laughs> oh, who would we have chosen to compete against? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. When the girls came back, who would you have chosen? Oh! Uh... Were we eliminated girls or were we there? You're still there, the eliminated girls. Okay, okay. I would have chose... <laughs> I love Gia. Please don't throw tomatoes. Um, I, I would have, I would have probably, ch ch well, cause you know it's an unpopular opinion. Everybody's been, they're like, yeah, Gia. But um, I would probably pick Farah or Gia. I don't know. Yeah, one of them. Yeah, it depends on what the number was too. Like you get a song, and if it's a dancing song, you'd be like, which one of these hoes can't dance? Okay, <laughs> let's find out. Exactly. Next. Would you have chose Jasmine Shangela? Yeah, oh, no. I love, no, I don't know. It, again, it depends on the song. I know you're looking for a shady comment against Jasmine, yeah, but, but I don't have shit against that girl. Let her roll her weed and do her videos all day long. <laughs> Hallelujah, I love you, girl. What is your Holy Grail makeup product? Holy Grail makeup product. I have one. Um, I have like, they, like that Chola Maybelline eyeliner, the red one that you have to burn with a lighter. And, yeah, oh, if you don't know about that, it, it's very dark. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here she goes. Um, my, I really love the Kevin Aquan Skin Enhancer as like foundation that you could really cut it with moisturizer. You could really pack it on. It's really creamy, high coverage. There's no product out there like it. And I love, 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 love Kevin Aquan's product. <laughs> it sounds rich. It yeah. does, doesn't it, girl? <laughs> Shit. I'm over at the CVS yeah. talking about the sponges. <laughs> <laughs> Not Kevin LaCroix. Bitch, my shit is Maybelline. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, love, I love glitter. So, like, yeah. there are a lot of great glitter products, uh, gift faces. They're like the matte glitters that you like. To, you know, I'm a drag queen that loves the stage and lights, bitch. So anything that pops, sequins, rhinestones, crystals, glitter, I love all that. Like the glitter I wore in this T-shirt. <laughs> Yes, bitch. The, it says the mother of drag guns, okay? And on the back, if you watch Game of Thrones, you know they always say winter is here. Well, winter is queer, bitch. <laughs> yes. Coming soon to Shangela.com. Hallelujah. All right, what's your question? Okay, first, so excited. Going to try to get this out. Uh, love you all. So my question is, you guys are all like three queens who have like kind of, I guess the way I can word it is like transcendent drag race, like Shangela with you in A Star is Born, Valentina, you in Rent, and Adora, your fucking music. Don't On look like street. that. <laughs> Adora, you are the number one dick sucker. No, anyway. Uh, so I, I kind of want to hear your like comment on that or like your advice or just like how did that path open for you? I just want to hear like some kind of insight on that. Like we all live in this bubble that's like drag race, which is amazing, but you guys are like fucking superstars and have transcended that. So please talk about it. Shangela, I see you looking and I love you. I love you too, baby. Um, okay, I'll jump in. Is that okay first? You know what it is? I think we are going to have a similar answer in this, baby. Drag Race is not a machine that when you come out, you know, a lot of girls think, if I get on Drag Race, that's my ticket. I'm the one. And you can look. We've had, what, 140 queens about? And, and a lot are doing really great in whatever lane they want to be. But if you want to really be a superstar, it's not Drag Race that's going to make it for you. you got to have that mentality, that confidence, that work ethic before you go into Drag Race that you now take the opportunity and the extra leverage that you get from Drag Race and you go out there and work. The only thing you can get what you want in this life is to put your thoughts toward it, to think positively on it, and go out there and make it happen for yourself. Okay, bitch? <laughs> Truly. Yeah, I think um, I think for somebody like me, I have 
gone through the experience of being on RuPaul's Drag Race twice. And I think what separates me from some of the other queens is that I have a really big gratitude to the platform that being on RuPaul's Drag Race has given me. Lots of times there's a lot yeah. of queens that speak against the RuPaul's Drag Race franchise or RuPaul himself, but I'm really grateful to the experience because if it wasn't for that experience, I would have not been discovered in Rent. If it wasn't for that, we yeah. don't know if you would have gotten a Star is Born. We get this huge platform like Adore, you had American Art Idol, bitch. Like, come on, girl. That's, these platforms that come into our life are stepping stones to achieve bigger and better things and to always strive for something bigger and always something better. And I think that's what we have in common. We're always reaching for the stars and not looking back. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I love that. No, I, I agree with you. Can we? Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. No, uh, I agree. To, to, to just kind of jump off of that, it's definitely work ethic and a mix of that as well. Um, I was kind of lucky enough to kind of be on TV when I was 16, so I kind of grew up in front of a camera. So um, I have an advantage, and I understand that. And and um, and I never take that for granted. But um, but yeah, I would say that that taught me a lot because when I first stood in front of a camera, I would get like hives, and I would turn like super red when I was a kid. But it kind of like threw me out there in Hollywood and no they really did it was like they're like well bitch figure it out at 16 and I was like my balls haven't dropped yet just one of them has and I had to, you have to figure it out and do some fucked up shit but I mean if you want this to be your career you have to work your ass off but yeah and, and if I can just tag on the end of that real quick you also a lot of times a lot of us and it's maybe it's RuPaul or someone in our personal lives have been a mentor for us or helped us or encouraged us. So never just live in your own bubble, baby. It's important to keep the love going around. Spread the opportunities around. It's not you're always competing with the person next to you. Just compete with yourself and go for it, but help somebody out because we truly have been helped out in our careers along the way, for sure. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Hello, what's your question? All right, um, my question is, and also, God damn it, you're all so beautiful. Like, it's insane, I can't even take it. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, if the next season of All Stars happens, who would be your pick and why? To go on there and yeah. compete? Didn't we just... <laughs> well... I don't know. Me, bitch. <laughs> no, I, I think uh, to go on... If we were picking a cast of All Stars, and they couldn't have been there already, let's just say that. I, have, um, I, I just think there's a lack of the Puerto Rican queens on All Stars. I'm, like, they have such huge personalities, like Jessica Wilde. Jessica like, Wilde. Like, really? Acai yeah. Berry? Like, are you kidding me? Get her back on TV, please. And Mystique I Summers Madison, bitch. True. Bring back Mystique. I want to see two piece and a biscuit. <laughs> Hello, what's your question? Hi, my question is for Adora Delano. What is the dirtiest and nastiest thing that you've ever done on tour? Oh, God. <laughs> How much time we have now? Um, what do you mean, as it pertains to what? Uh, as a rock star? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I don't really shower for like a while because like we're on the road a lot. So a lot of people think that like I, I smell good, but it's only because I buy really expensive perfume to like, like spray over the crustiness of my feet. But um, other than that, I don't know. I, we don't have time to do anything crazy. I don't know. <laughs> But th good question. <laughs> uh, Valentina. Valent over here, yay. <laughs> Hi, honey. Uh, what is this French vanilla fantasy? What is in that? Oh my God, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad, y'all. I'm so delicious. Um, so I had the thrill of, of w when we're on Drag Race, Hi. there's PAs there that are there to help us with whatever we need. And the rumor got around that I would ask for the French Vanilla Fantasy. And what the French Vanilla Fantasy was, it was just a simple coffee that had like a little donut picture on it. You would put it in the boom boom ba doom You put it, you put the <laughs> creamer, put the lid, and you must put the little, like the cup cover. And it has to be with the straw because the bitch don't want her teeth to get yellow. So, <laughs> it, so I would say, mi amor, could you get me a French Vanilla Fantasy, please? And if they didn't know what the French Vanilla Fantasy was, I was like, okay, ven, mi amor, let me show you. This is how you make the French Vanilla Fantasy. So word got around. They were like, can I get a French Vanilla Fantasy? And everybody knew what the French Vanilla Fantasy was. And then everybody was reciting, started saying that, oh, this bitch is over here feeling her French Vanilla Fantasy. 
<laughs> but there was something about me that was having fun with them. I don't know if they were having fun with me doing it, <laughs> but I think they did because they would like roll their eyes and giggle every time. But the French vanilla fantasy is really about closing your eyes, picturing something, and it not matching reality. <laughs> And as long as you just feel that, you can continue to be happy, okay? <laughs> Hello. Hi. This is for a door. If you were to stay on All Stars, how far did you think you would go? Um, I would have made top two with Alaska. Yeah. 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 If, you, if it was like right now and you could go back and redo it, would you still leave? No. You wouldn't leave? Oh, I would have left, yeah. No, you would have still left. I wouldn't have said yes. I said no the first time to my management, and yeah. they're like, a booking fee. But I'm like, bitch, if you work your ass up, that, that'll stay there. But um, yeah, I went back, and it was awful for my spirit. It was, I was not right. ready for it, yeah. So never again? Um, maybe again, but not that time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, hello, what's your question? I have a question. Uh, all, all beautiful, I love you all. My question, however, is for Shangela. So you're featured on Shang on Ariana Grande's new album. I was wondering if you could give us some background information on how that all happened or, you know, what went down. Oh, this story's been told so many times. Of course I'm gonna tell you, bitch, come on. <laughs> Cause I'm living, I'm so excited it actually happened. You never know when uh, different things will actually come to, to come out and come actually fruition. So I'll tell you, okay, little Ariana T, okay? <laughs> so I was at um, dinner with my good friend Frankie, who I've known for years, and we've done like fundraisers together and stuff. So we're in New York, we'll have a little kiki and a meal, and Ariana texts him, you know, that's her brother. So she's like, bro, I'm at the studio, come through. And he was like, I have have Shangela with me and she's like oh love her bring her so because we had met at the Wango Tango concert doing a fundraiser earlier that year so so he's like you want to go to the studio my sister's there I'm like yeah so we go to the studio and I'm real like you know you go in there and Ariana's there so you're just like I want to be sweet and not crazy like ah, I love you girl so I just walk and I was like hi and she's like hey girl she's like chill right and she's like do you guys want to hear some songs from the new album and I'm like trying to play it low key but on the inside I'm like fuck yes bitch whoa bitch so I was like oh yeah sure girl sure and she's like oh, okay you know she's all soft and shit like, oh. and she starts playing some of the songs bitch I heard thank you next before all y'all heard it okay <laughs> can't nobody say Shan you can't keep a secret okay I think I knew Pete was an ex before Pete knew he was an ex okay so anyhow <laughs> So, so it, I was like, is that his name? Oh, shit. Like, anyway, I'm good at So anyhow, so she plays NASA, and I knew, hit. I mean, you hear it, and it was just, you know, if you've heard it, it's track three on the new Thank You Next album. It's sickening. So when it was done, she's like, and then we're still working on the opening. I'm like, oh, I already know, girl. I'm motivated. My drag version is going to be sickening. She was like, your version. And I was like, well, I mean, like, yes, like, like, I'm going to do, like, a drag thing. I'm going to come out in a space suit with titties, and it's going to be sparkled and rhinestone. And I'm going to look at the audience and say, this is one small step for woman, <laughs> one giant leap for womankind. And then she was like, oh, my God. Like, oh, my God. I love it. And then she, all of, she's like, you have to record it now. So she gets her phone, and she, like, it's, you know, I was like, phone? <laughs> she was like, no, really. She gets the voice notes. This iPhone is powerful, okay, bitch? So she pulls up, I, boy, I didn't even go to the studio, no check. So anyhow, so, I mean to the studio. So, so she gets the voice notes and she's like, say it right now. Like, and I told her, I was like, well, let me get ready, girl, because I wasn't even in drag, bitch. And she was like, it's on voice recording, bitch. It's not on camera. But she, I was like, mm, I don't know, bitch. You're going to get me, girl. I want to look good. So, so, so we recorded it. And then, you know, you do stuff like that, but you never know what's going to come about. And then a couple months later, when she was on her way to film the performance that they did of Thank You Next on Ellen, uh, she FaceTimed Frankie because we were out in New York getting people out to the polls to vote, and I was in full drag at the polls in New York. Ain't even a New York resident. They were like, so the inter they were interviewing me. They're like, are you so excited to vote? I was like, bitch, I don't live here. I <laughs> but I need all y'all to come out and vote. Yeah, come on, baby. I'll high-five everybody at the poll. So anyhow, so, so she calls, and she's like, how do you want to be credited on the album? And I'm like, you better quit playing with me, girl. Because, you know, I was going to put on the buns, too, the little space buns. And I was like, <laughs> so anyhow, it ended up happening. And if you don't have it yet, check out. I'm so excited because this year I am on track three on the Stars Born album. And I'm on track three on NASA, uh, the Thank You Next album, bitch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> but this shirt is going to be available <laughs> on Shangela.com. <laughs>
Hello, what's your question? Hi, my name is Kagan, and I personally think that Monet won that final lip sync. I, I wonder, do you, do you have a favorite lip sync from the season? Or like, I know Shangela killed it in season three with the lip syncs. Do you have a favorite like lip syncer on the seasons, or someone you could just watch lip sync for hours? Latrice. Yeah. She can make me cry with like lip syncing a ballad, and like that's very rare for me. But I just love the emotion that she just gives everybody. Like everybody feels the words that are coming out of her mouth, and that's very rare. I have to jump in on this too, um, and I and you know what? It makes me very, not upset, but just disappointed. Everybody good? Okay, Miley, what's good? Um, what's <laughs> happening? No, I'm gonna say this to you guys. It may. I'm very. This is a, a tough spot for me because I know what being on RuPaul's Drag Race is like. You know, if you go on there and you're your authentic self and you get a clip of yourself, sometimes it comes out really great and a lot of people attach to your moment and what's going on. And sometimes it doesn't come out as great. And it's just really this much of a snapshot of who you are in your life. And a lot of people have been turned off to the Latrice Royale experience. And I'm a forever a friend, a fan, a family member of Latrice Royale. And I think she deserves a lot of respect because she's been in this, not just because she's been around for a very long time doing drag, but for what she stands for and who she is. And even though she didn't come off the best in this particular season, don't discount the fact that she's been in this game since season four. She's been traveling, touring. I watch her every meet and greet. She's sweet to every fucking body. Ain't nobody got a bad story on Latrice Royale at a show. And I just want to give y'all, if you love Latrice, give her a round of applause yeah. right now, please. Because it's hard. It's hard when you come off Drag Race and you know that that little representation of you may not have been the absolute best of who you are as a person. So show her some love online because she's getting a lot of flack right now. So I would love if y'all did it. Yeah, girl. No. Hello, what's your question? Hi, you ladies look beautiful. And this question is for any of you because hopefully it reaches whoever it should. Um, I feel like this season really brought to the forefront just how ugly the fandom has gotten and how toxic with like sending death threats to queens and stuff like that. What would you say to those fans? Uh, I think it's been building and building as the season grow. Like the seasons have gone on. The, the, the show just gets keep, keeps getting bigger and bigger. And inevitably people are just going to continue being awful and honest and just really, really empty and shallow in the way that they comment about people that they don't know. And I personally know that I have a lot of a following that can make a lot of racist comments. And it's very hurtful. It's very uh, against my morals of who I am. And I encourage people that are part of my following or that my fans to not do that to show compassion, and to just know when is the right time to say something and how to say it. I think for a lot of people in Latin America, there's still a lot of growth that needs to be had and a lot of topics about colorism in Latin America that need to be had because I think it's racism is still very prevalent within the Latin community. And I, 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 I wanna be as a good of example as I possibly can, um, but I also, want to be able to know that I'm not everybody's mother and that I, I should not be held responsible for the actions of other people, but I can only inspire people through example, through my morals and not being that kind of person and just move forward and not focus on that terrible energy. Because I get a lot of hate too, but do you ever see me complain about it? No. Why? Because that's not something that I'm gonna focus on because that's gonna bring me down and it's gonna bring me lower. I'm only gonna focus on what I choose to move forward and keep positive. And I encourage the other drag queens, anybody that gets hate, I get hate too, to just go beyond it. People are going to always be awful. People are always gonna want you to not be successful. But it's not about those strangers. It's about the everyday people that are in your life that really matter, that should have an impact on your life. Not a group of strangers being racist. Fuck them. Fuck them. You know? Bitch, use, I have learned to use the block 
button, okay? And that's metaphorical as well, in that in your life, if people are throwing negative shade at you, it's not good. We don't want to encourage it at all, but I don't think it's just the drag race fandom. It's people in general that sometimes that are online, you gotta learn to deal with that stuff in life. Everybody's not always gonna like you, but on social media, you have a block button, bitch. Shut that shit out of your life, boom, and it's done, and keep it moving with a smile, hallelujah. Hello, what's your question? Hey, how are y'all? I love you too. Valentina, me das un abrazo. Sure. Oh, yes. Just a reminder, meet and greet is after the show. So you can pay for that. Okay. Yeah, that, that hug's on the house. Yeah. Hello, yes, I'm gonna get everyone. You don't need to wave your hands like it's fucking uh, Black Friday sale and you're not gonna get a fucking big screen. All right, come over here. Hi, what's your question? Take some sunglasses. Hi, what's your question? Alrighty, so this question is for Valentina. First of all, you are all so beautiful. Um, for Valentina, so let's say, for example, your position with Pheromone would have been switched. How would you have felt if Pheromone had the choice to eliminate you and she actually would have? I would have been fine. My career would have kept going and I wouldn't have <laughs> taken things personal. That's it. That's how I work. And yeah. I know what we all will know what we sign up for. And we all know that we're in a difficult position that if you win, winning comes along with the curse of sending someone home. And if in that situation, that's what she thought, that was her power, she won and she was able to do that. When I got eliminated by um, Latrice, I didn't take it personal. If anybody would have eliminated me, I wouldn't have taken it personal. I would have just seized every single moment to fill my fantasy and let my fans and my following and use the platform the best that I could while I had it. And that's it. And I did yes. and I will. Yes. <laughs> All right, I, I can't get in here, so I'm gonna start calling you guys forward. So I'll get you in a second. Hello, hi, what's your question? Hi, Adora. I hold the mic. Hi, my daughter loves you. Hi, where is she? <laughs> She's not here, oh. but if I, you know, she just adores you. And um, if you had a chance to come back, would you come back for another All Stars? Yeah, I would in the future, but not like right now. Okay. Yeah, I would be like one of the good old season queens from back in the day, like in 2025, you know? <laughs> They'd be like, wow, remember her when Santino was still the judge? <laughs> I don't think there would be there'd still be a ton of fans for you. Yeah, I mean, well, hopefully the stars align and my psyche gets ready for that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but thank you, I appreciate you. that. Hello, uh, oh, hi, what's your question? Um, this is for Adore. Is there anything left in your drag career that you still want to accomplish? Uh, well. <laughs> She's done. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> No, I really, oh, I, yeah. I, I, I've, I've always like been an actor when I was younger, so I just kind of want to like go back into that realm. Like I've, I've, I've taken acting classes as a, as a kid and stuff, so I would love to kind of just, because it's a different rush. I mean, you know. Adora, can you bring back Angel Baby? Yeah. <laughs> I want to, one day. <laughs> Hello, what's your question? I love it. Oh, uh, it's for... I hold the mic. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, Adore. I don't have a question. All right, does anybody have a question? <laughs> I love All you. All right, here, come up here. What's your name? Meet and greet sold out. Hello, what's your question? That's a reminder that is a question, not a statement. Hello. Hi, my question is for everyone. Um, if you could join one of the clubs, would you have, or would you have created your own club? Which club? The, like, the Black Hole in like Club 96. Oh. <sighs> From the club's challenge. I, I, I just want to go to Club 96 to be in there going, Club 96! Yeah. All night, just, Club 96! <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, Club 96 was it. What's that? It was iconic. That was your club, bitch! I bitch. forgot! <laughs> Did you see that long-ass drink? <laughs> All right, hello, what's your question? My question is for Shangela. Shangela, do you plan on DJing anywhere here in Chicago anytime soon? You know, I get that all the time. Bitch, I'm not a DJ. My name is DJ, okay? It stands for Darius Jeremy, okay? That's my fucking name. But, but, you know I love a check. So, 
If somebody throws the right amount of money, I'll be behind a laptop like Pearl, bitch, and <laughs> push some buttons. <laughs> And space bar. <laughs> I'll do it, bitch. <laughs> she gives good finger right. on that space bar girl. Yeah. Like you hear you hear a song in the middle of a transition and she's like waving to someone. I'm like, well, that's just a 45 minute mix. Okay. All right. Does anyone here have a question? Hi, I can't get back there, so I need you to muscle up here. Yeah, make way for him, guys. Thank you, thank you. We're gonna do a four more, four more. Yes, Hello. muscle. What is your question? Hi, hello. So this question's for all y'all. Um, so now, like, that you've obviously been through Drag Race and seen what that experience is like, you know, there's a lot of criticism that I've heard from just my friends and social media in general about Drag Race and what it th represents. And I'm curious to see where you guys think Drag Race could do better in terms of representation, in terms of just more validly or more accurately representing the diversity of the queer community. I mean, honestly... I know there is criticism, and I don't want to sound like, you know, just like I'm only cheering for RuPaul's Drag Race, although I'm so thankful for the show. I think, honestly, they do a fantastic job about putting queer people on television from all different walks of life. If you look at the 140 queens, we've had people of Latin descent, of black descent, of Asian, lots of different cultures represented. Finally, we had a trans person, which we have a great trans community. They're a very strong part of the drag community. I think they could maybe open it up one day to drag kings, to bio queens. I think the sky's the limit. But I don't want to criticize Drag Race because they've done such good work. What other the show do you know that has us tucking our dicks on TV, on mainstream right. TV, right. Talk, and with and people are now writing. I work in Hollywood, thankfully, but you know I'm seeing a lot more scripts and auditions come across where people are taking notes from RuPaul's Drag Race and how they're writing. And sometimes you'd be like, "What straight woman wrote this, bitch?" Right. They don't use the word "all wrong." Sometimes, sometimes, or if I have to hear "sickening" one more time, we got there's yeah. more words in queer community. But the people are starting to pay attention to us, and I think that's because of the prevalence and the existence of RuPaul's Drag Race on television for 10 fucking years, okay? Thank you. Come on, give me something. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. What about y'all? Is there anything that you think needs to be switched um, there, up? I mean, it's... Uh, no, but I mean, I would love to see more trans representation. Uh, uh, a lot of Southern trans girls that I want to see on the show that I'm just like, really? Or like... I want to see Aurora on there. Like she's yes. she's past due a few seasons. Like, like on for sure. I don't know. But other than that, I mean, <laughs> Valentina. Um, I, I I personally dream of like seeing like like a Bollywood queen, like the Aishwarya Rai of drag, just just full on doing Bollywood and just like in full beautiful like Bollywood drag and just like being able to do all the dance and everything. So if she's out there, bitch audition. <laughs> All right, we'll do a few more. Don't worry, I'll get you guys. Hello, what's your question? Hi, um, anyone can answer this one or add to it. Um, so recently you've seen a lot of um, drag in more mainstream elements, like Shangela, you were in uh, A Star is Born, and Valentina, you were on Rent. So um, I'm wondering like, what you all think about how drag is being incorporated into more mainstream culture and what that implies for drag itself and so on. I think there needs to be even more of it. I think drag queens need to be considered celebrities that walk the Met Gala. The, I, think, I think we sell out theaters, we have a big following, we inspire a lot of people at the heart, and we are kind of creative directors of these characters that we create and we build. We dress ourselves, we are the makeup artist, we are the comedian, we are the dancer. We are the, sometimes we're even the manager, you know? Like, we're really taking a hold of our career and pushing forward, and I think if there's more opportunities for us, I think, I think now is the time that the industry should respect us as the artists that we are, that a lot of times we do a lot more than just, just being a singer or just and being an actress, or, you know? We do so fucking much as queens. And not just the girls from RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah. I think that as more people, and you're starting to see this. I just saw a billboard today, a mortgage billboard right over here, and it was like, don't drag out your mortgage. Yes. And that bitch was in full drag on yeah. the billboard, bitch. And I was like, and she can sell stuff. And 
a lot, and you're exactly right. A lot of times, drag queens in history have been unsung heroes because they have been a one-stop shop. You know this, this, to get your stuff done. Sometimes you got to do your own hair, you do your own makeup, you put your own look together, whereas somebody who's a pop star from a machine may have an entire team that puts them together. But if you let the drag girls out the door, bitch, we are going to make big things happen right. around the world, and you're seeing that happen. So thank you. Um... We actually have a special guest here with us. Miss Dita Ritz is here. Dita! Dita! Come on, Fuchsia. Hey, sister! 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 Hi, everyone. Hi. Dita! I like to pop over here because, you know, these are my girls, these are my sisters. I just want to say congratulations to Rent, congratulations to the Star is Born, and bitch, the last time I was with you, I got wasted and had the best experience <laughs> of my life. Yeah, do you remember that night, right? Oh, that was fun. That's what we do. Yeah. Oh, that's what we do. So, no, uh, oh, okay. I just wanted to say hello to everyone. You all look beautiful. Thank you for supporting Dragon Dita, Idris. sit your ass down with us right now, girl. Oh, Get okay. up here, come Dita, on. What did, you, what did you think of two girls winning? Um, I was confused. <laughs> I relate back to uh, what Aja said about the whole, like, when uh, Benda LaCreme, like, eliminated herself, and she was like, I don't know how that people are going to take that. And I, as soon as it happened, I was like, oh, I don't know how to take that. But you know what? It's good. You got two queens. They're both fabulous. And make, I mean, Monet Exchange and Trinity, congratulations, honey. Congratulations. Yes. Is that the nice thing or is that a shady thing? I think it's shady as hell. Only one bitch should have won. How about that? Better? Okay. okay, okay. All right, uh, I'm coming over here for a couple more. Yeah, stay up. You want to stay up here? Yeah, bitch, chill. Hi, uh, come to me a little bit. Hi, what's your question? Here, I'll let you hold the mic. This is very coveted. Yeah, you can hold the mic. Hi, um, how do you, s this question is for any one of you. How do you see yourselves in the next 10 years? Girl, this is a professional interview. How do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Still writing music, hopefully, like, you know, happy. More reality <laughs> TV? Would you do more? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm actually, yeah. yeah. Oh! <laughs> oh! Yeah, Boop. In 10 years, um, just rich. <laughs> so rich, bitch, and creating great opportunities. You know what, RuPaul has set such a standard for us, and we all, like, want to be, like, no, you know how all the girls know RuPaul and we all look up to her because she's been around for 30 fucking years and she's still out there. She's still working hard. She's still winning awards. And that's what I want to do. And I also, like, people who mentor me, like Jennifer Lewis, she's 62 years old. She just turned 62. I watch her create every day when she could be just, you know, she made money. She could just sit back if she wanted to. She goes to work. She learns lines. She writes books. She creates songs. She does one woman show. And she ain't even tired. And she's 62. So I'm like, you know what? I have in 10 years, 20 years, I want to still be that passionate about working and creating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. What's your question? If you guys were in another season of All Stars, which two of you guys do you think would make it to the top two? Oh, shady. So if this was a season of All-Stars, who would be in the top two? I'm going to say me just because I ain't had no opportunities yet, so it better be me. That's all I got to say up in this bitch. Okay. <laughs> well, Sorry, we all know I'm going and not winning, but it's okay. So it's good. By default, it's these two hoes. No, I don't know. I, really I don't know don't. if I have it in me. Yeah, right? Yeah, I've done it. Yeah. I've done it and I loved it. Like... Why go back and like, if you've done it and you, it was great, right. go back and then maybe screw it up, everything that you work for? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Well, we ready? all have those feelings though. Are you, are you when we go back, like <laughs> no, when we I'm went not. back for All Stars, it was it. like, do I really want to go? Because you built it, I mean, for me, I was like, yeah, because I saw what I look like in two, I sure do want to go now. <laughs> but, but if you've already established like a legacy of what you're doing, you have that, you're like nervous about your career. Really? You can look at other girls who have gone back and it may not have gone the best for them. And so you, you do have those thoughts in your head like, ooh, should I go, I shouldn't go. I also feel like there's like this notion of I'm tired of competing against people. I'm tired of comparing myself to people or put, being put in a situation where I have to compare myself. Yeah. Like I yeah. feel like being and doing is enough. Yeah. And I feel as an artist personally, I'm on my own journey like to be competing and comparing 
because we're all so fucking different and we all well do said. each do something so individually well, and the worst great. is being on the stage when they're comparing you and you're like really after all I've done in the world, you're going to sit up here and read me over a piece of thread hanging from the left side, bitch. And I have done 184 cities and worked my ass off, and I'm back in this gig again exactly. where they're like, mm, I don't know. I like you in short hair, not long. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so that. No, uh, everything that they were saying on stage, I'm just like, fucking bitches, man. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, it's just a different perspective. It really is. And, and you have to think of it like I was like working with Michelle at the time as well, like on tour for like a few months. So it's like you gain like a different type of relationship with her. And then now she has you up on the stage and she gets to judge you again when you just ignore her all like those months. So I looked at her like, fuck you, bitch. Like, but, <laughs> but no, I love her, but whatever. <laughs> all right. Such love. Uh, I'm going to do a, four, a few more over here and then I'm going to come back over here. Hello, what's your question? Hi, uh, I love all four of you. Uh, I have to say my favorite like recent Drag Race memory is when Morgan punched a Nazi in the face. Have any of you punched a Nazi in the face? And if not, how can we make queer people punching Nazis in the face a thing in 2019? Just start doing it. Like, make it a trend. Make it a trend, baby. <laughs> oh, I was going to answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, never mind. Okay. I punched a Nazi in the face when I was 15. I really have. There's this Where? guy named Scott. I punched a Nazi named... Where? In Glendora, California. Oh, wow. He was, he was about to jump me at a party, and I got one hit in, and they fucking got me. Oh, what? No, oh. you're good. And then my brothers came and beat the shit out of them. It was really cool. She got those yeah. connections. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that wouldn't make sense with my fantasy. Like, my fantasy would be like... <laughs> Bodyguard, attack. Uh, I think that's how I'd do it. Take a few shots of Jack Daniels, you girl. You'll be in it. <laughs> All right, hello, what's your question? On either season that y'all were on, what's the best thing that happened that was off camera? Ooh, best thing off camera oh! that happened. Ooh, I, I got know. one. Yeah, go. Do it. Well, okay, um, well, I was gonna save this for a book, but I guess I'll tell y'all, don't put this on <laughs> If you read it in the book, just be like, oh, yeah, never heard that before. Okay. Um, during season three, now I can tell this because I probably won't have to go back no more, so we're good. <laughs> um, during the taping of season three, you know, we're on lockdown when you're filming. So you can't, like, you're really not supposed to communicate with each other when you're in the hotel. You're not supposed to go anywhere. You're that. But it was Stacy's birthday, okay? <laughs> and Stacy had her birthday during the film. Oh, my God, I can't believe I'm telling this. Um, uh, Stacy had her birthday during the filming of Drag Race. So one night at the hotel, I think, okay, so it was early because Stacey was still there, obviously, and Mariah was there. And we, Mariah didn't go with us. She got drunk on wine and fell asleep. Mariah. <laughs> but we snuck out of the hotel. Oh, my God, we could get in so much trouble for this now. <laughs> but we snuck out of the hotel, and we took a taxi. We found it. There was a payphone at the ho next to us. We called. It was four of us, five of us total. I won't say who. Stacy. And... <laughs> She was all five. Just kidding. No, just fucking <laughs> kidding, kidding. So we we took a uh, we took a taxi to a, a gay club back in West West Hollywood, uh, actually in Hollywood Arena, which is closed now. And afterward, we took her to the club. This is a true story for her birthday, because we we're like, bitch, you can't spend your birthday in this fucking hotel. And she was probably going home the next day. So we were like, come on, bitch. Oh. We take it. No, it's true. No, no, she did go home the next day. So we took her out for her birthday, and then I remember when the club closed, we couldn't get a, it was before Uber, damn, Fuck. dated. Um, but so we were trying to catch a taxi, and we had to walk four, like, city L.A. blocks uh. to go find the cab stand, and Stacey was walking and sweating, bitch, and she was like, fuck y'all hoes, <laughs> fuck y'all hoes. <laughs> But no one ever found out because we like taped the little thing on the door. You know how you anybody ever did this? Like if your door is gonna automatically close, you put Watch tape out. over the little Where thing. Oh, we were crafty bitches. We went to the club. If we would have got caught, we would have totally been kicked off. But we were crafty bitch. <laughs> Hello, what's your question? Hi, um, my question's for everyone. Um, I know we're supposed to be supporting both of them, but the question is, who do you prefer, Nicki Minaj or Cardi B? <laughs> I thought he was going to ask like Bonet or Trinity, like a tough one. And I like that Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. Well, I always say I, I, I love them both. I love female rappers, but I like Nicki Minaj personally. That She's my, my choice. I, she's I'm team Cardi because she's a Libra. So, I mean, that's... 
and she's very impulsive like me, and I'm like, she does that sober? I have an excuse, man. So anybody that can do that sober, I'm down with. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I really enjoy Cardi B's personality. She's just so polarizing. Ah, uh, okay, y'all can't discount Nikki up in here, okay? First of all, Nikki been in the game and been around for a hot minute. She so has Lil' Kim. And, and, and I love Lil' Kim, but I don't think we should have to compare them. Honestly, I bought both their music, so they got my money. They both won, okay? Hallelujah. I agree. Hello, what's your question? Hey, first of all, I love all you guys. I'm gagged just to be in the same room as you. Um, but I have to ask this. I need to know, going back to Pearl and all the drama with her and Rue, I want to know what you guys think about her coming forward with all of that and if you guys ever had an experience similar. What did she say? She said that Rue said, like, because she was like, oh, my God, Rue, I'm so excited to see you and, or meet you or whatever, and she was like, nothing you say matters unless that camera is rolling. <laughs> Tower? That's Hollywood, baby. <laughs> I have to say, just to interject, I know you didn't ask, I thought the same thing. I was like, it's a reality show. Save exactly. your reactions for Rue. Like, and, why are you getting butt hurt? And but, some people don't see this, but sometimes Rue doesn't even really look at us because she's catching her light. She's a she queen. Looks right so, yeah. She'll be looking at you like this. So adore. And she's looking at Darian. I'm like, bitch. <laughs> I looked at her like, is she lost her damn mind? But then she's, w when we came back, she was like, if you guys see, because she was laughing at me, because I kept going, what are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you didn't get the memo, but she's, she's just catching she's her light. She's like a full on robot. That's yeah. all I take, Rue. I'm like, Rue is like a full robot. I just, I hope the batteries are charged and right. I'm like, I have a good experience. If you look closely, you can see where she's plugged yeah, into the like, room wall. Oh, yeah, like, Chuck no, e. Cheese. Don't see, no, don't see, don't. None of that has ever happened with me, so I'm good. <laughs> I can see where Pearl would feel like her, because you meet yeah. your idol and you're like, I want to have this moment. But also you have to remember, they're filming a television show. She and has honestly, 200 as as, people waiting on as her As much to as do Rue her thing. would love to connect with everyone, yeah. she really can't because then it looks like favoritism. If she talks to her, I'm like, why are they laughing? And she didn't laugh with me, you right. know? I, I did do that too, though. When they were laughing at like Bianca or whatever, I'd be like, why are you laughing at her? When you, you wouldn't even look at me in the eye. <laughs> but then the next week she looked at me. <laughs> it was October 3rd. <laughs> I'm quick, but I don't take shots. <laughs> all right, hello, what's your question? This is a question for Adore. I love you all, but I, in season six, after the rap music video, what was it like when Michelle Visage said your wig looked like real hair? Oh, <laughs> well, no, I had, had um, just basically modeled that hairstyle off of my sister in like 92, <laughs> so, uh, and the overalls, I just mopped them from her, no. Um, but no, I don't know, I just wanted it to look like, cause she had that whole like swathed kind of posh spice gig, helmet gig. But um, I don't know, I don't, how did it feel? Um, oh, 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 it, it, it felt you lovely. Got bundles, bundles, bitch, bundles. bundles. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. I don't know, man. All right, hello. <laughs> What's your question? Okay. Um, my question is, what was your favorite outfit that you guys wore for your season? Which one? What is your favorite outfit that you wore from your season? Mine was the one that I made the first challenge with the pink bow. It was fucking cool, and it was iconic. <laughs> <laughs> it was falling apart when I went backstage, but it was iconic. <laughs> oh, okay. Strangela, I Valentina. Love Valentina, what's your favorite outfit? We haven't heard from you in a second. I love all of them. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I really the do. Fantasy, I love it. The I do. French vanilla. Like my clothes are like my babies. Like, you know, some people have houses or cars. Like I just have a lot of fucking wigs and drag. You don't have a favorite house or car? <laughs> no, not yet. Like I'm working towards that. A bitch has been saving. Yeah. Save your coins, Mary. Put them in the bank. Don't just spend them. Amen on that. Or uh -huh. a Fidelity Money Managed account. A Roth IRA with no tax shield, okay? <laughs> For some of y'all with some coins, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a few more. Hello. Hi. Hi. You guys are fucking gorgeous. Just say I'm in awe. Um, I'm so short. I'm sorry. I have an 11 and a 13-year-old daughter that watch the show with us every Friday, and they adore you. I get judged all the time for it. What do you say to people that are very close-minded to the world of drag that think I'm bringing them into it way too young? Just trying to keep an open mind as a mother. Yes, that's good a good one. question. Yeah. May I? Hell yeah. Um, I would say to those people, you know, every parent is different, but the fact that you are an open-minded, 
loving, yes. inclusive, yes. loving. I said loving already, but it means so much that you're opening your kids' minds to the differences in the world, that there are so many different types of people, gay people, drag people, and sometimes people don't want to see it because it's sometimes a difficult conversation to have with a kid. If you're not used to talking to your kids, which some parents are like, eh, I don't want to talk about that. Don't ask me about sex. Don't ask me about men dressed in his wig. Because it's also, they may have something built in their head against it, and they don't feel like it's a good time to talk to kids about it. But honestly, when you have a real conversation with a child or someone younger, especially, how old did you say your kids were? Oh, they 13. already fucking bitch. So anyhow, <laughs> no, 2019. Baby. Oh but, but the thing, Jesus but the thing about it is, if you can have those open conversations with your kids, that shows how confident of a parent you are, and right. that you can show them love. That's a good thing, girl. I think it's a good thing. And you tell them back off. When my kids are running the world as loving, inclusive, open-minded people, and they're not scared of the idea of something because you weren't afraid to have a conversation about it with them, your kids will be leading. Okay, hallelujah. Right. Amen to that. Amen. Right. Stunning. Beautifully said. I know you have a question and I'll get to you. I was just over there two seconds ago and you weren't over there, so you can calm the fuck down because I'm coming back. <laughs> My God, I was, I've was i been over there for 10 fucking minutes, bitch. It's but not fucking that you, serious. Baby. My God. Like you got a fucking pressing matter, bitch. Fucking <laughs> national security. Hold on five minutes. Drink a water and I'll be over there. Jesus Christ. Hello. Hi. How are you? Welcome. What's your question? Um, esta pregunta es para Valentina. Valentina, yo te amo y um, tengo, eh, te sigo mucho y pusiste una vez en Instagram que tú piensas que tú eres tu propio sexo y yo admiro eso, que tú no te defines por lo que, por lo que eres o por lo que eres ahorita. Quiero, quiero saber que me, que me, que me des una respuesta sobre qué significa tú. Tu... Ok, ok. Let's I right understand there. like five words. Uh, Valentina, I assume that's to you or Adora. So one of y'all. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that. Bitch, hold on. Porque yo soy una oh, you international. You international, bitch. bitch. Yeah, you international, bitch. Perdona. Right. Perdona, perdona, bitch. Porque yo puedo decir. International, bitch. bitch. I, was like, okay. I was like, I understood like five or ten words he said. So I was like, let me sit back. No, muchas, I got an A yeah. minus in Spanish. Let me sit back. Let me just. Uh, muchas gracias. For those of you that don't speak Spanish, she was commenting about my recent coming out as gender non-binary. Mm. Muchas gracias, mi amor, and was saying that um, he was very moved by it. And I, um, I don't know, I've just come to terms with being in drag for so long and coming to a point with my gender identity, understanding it as a, as a construct and identifying in it being something very personal. And I've always felt very alienated in the world, like I was born somewhere that was not made for me. And um, it's, it, it ties along with the fantasy. And I found that through, through being angel and through doing drag for so long, I never really even felt fully identified as a, as a gay man. And there was just so much that I, I and then I just, I, I, I didn't, couldn't identify being a yeah. trans woman. And I just felt like both at the same time. And I think it was something that was very personal for me. And I felt that it was a time to share it because I was really um, exploring so many things with my character Angel and how she felt. And um, I share it uh, wholeheartedly for the people that are non-binary and for people that are also bisexual that I feel that are communities that are very criticized for being very indecisive and for those people that are non-binary, bisexual, we do exist, you are out there. And um, it's, you know, love love people in your community, however they identify. Yes. Gracias, mi amor. All right, we'll do a few more and then I'll come over to the obnoxious side of the stage. All right, hello, what's your question? Uh, Dira, your everlasting love lip sync is one of the best of all time. I'm wondering for all of you, uh, what is your number one lip sync song now if you were to compete for your legacy? Oh, what song do you want to perform? Oh, Dita. me. Um, Dita. Okay, so what song would I want to perform if that wasn't the song? Yeah, for all of you, what is your number one lip oh, yeah. sync now if yeah. you were to lip sync for your legacy? Um, I always have said, other than my lip sync, I love Two of Hearts with Morgan McMichaels and Sonique. Yeah. That's like 
that's like one of my favorites because I enjoy an entertainer who can like stand in one spot and really entertain and like Morgan was doing that but then you got Sonique back flipping up and down the runway. It was, it's just my, it's romper room at its finest. I loved it. I loved it. It was so good. So that's my choice. I mean, two of hearts, I would do that because that's fun. Valentina? Uh, <laughs> let me think of something. Uh, okay. How about, blah, 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 blah. oh, okay, okay, okay. How sickening would it be to just stand there and just emote, like just hear and give you I Dreamed a Dream from Les Mis Rob? Ooh. Yes, that would be good. Now, right? if, you, now, you, if you were to shave your head, yes, you shave. Oh, I, I would live. Get a lace front for the gods, baby. You start yeah, shaving, just to no, get rip dramatic. off your lashes and just break down like Anne. Oh, Hathaway. I'm here for that. I'm so here for that. <laughs> yeah, um, we like that. All right, we're gonna do just one more. Um, also, uh, if you already bought the meet and greet tickets, they're sold out. So, uh, if you want to get your green band, you can do that from uh, the front bar. There's a table. Uh, where is it? Next to the DJ booth? Ooh, next to the door. Oh, next to the front door, and that's where you get your band. Okay. Tranica, Tranica. Also, if you don't have a meet and greet ticket, Sean, is this right? You can still buy merchandise. Yes? <laughs> yeah. And if I didn't mention, I got Oh, yeah, what do you have over there? Hallelujah. Ah. As well as I pins, t shirts, not this one, but there are more. Oh, oh bitch, you brought your own. All right. We're just going like a heaven too. We're going <laughs> to take a break from Shangela Shopping Network real quick and we're going to All right, to this man who is over here yelling from the side of the stage, I hold the mic. So, what's your question? Okay, so I love all of you. <laughs> oh. Shangela, Valentina, Yes. If I and ever. Deidre. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Deidre is my government name. How you know me from the street? Where you know me from? That's my government name. All right, what is your question for Deidre? Okay. I love all of you, but Shanshawa, how does it feel to have it robbed from you, the All Stars title? Because you are, baby. You are All Stars, and we all love you, and we all know you. All right. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> baby. <laughs> where are you, baby? Where are you from? Where are you from? Hell. Where are you from? I live here, but I'm from Brazil. 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 All right, we love Brazil. Here's the deal. And honestly, I love. People always say you were wrong, you were wrong. But the thing about it is, I'm just so thankful that I was able to come back and represent who I've become in this world today. Because when you leave Drag Race, that's the last impression a lot of people have of you. And you can go, you can work, you can do so many things, but if you're not on a major platform like that, that's the last impression they have of you. They'd be like, oh, she was that girl. So to be able to come back, that was the win right there. And to connect with so many people around the world in places like Brazil, Australia, Chicago, Thailand, you know, and have them just have a connection with you, bitch, that's my crown right there. You don't have to have a crown to be a winner, okay? Okay, hallelujah. So thank you. All right, uh, that was our viewing party, uh, party for tonight. Make, no, make, some no make some noise for Deidre, okay. Deidre Rim. Give it up for Dina Rim. Deidre, us. Deidre, 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 Deidre. Uh, give it Deidre. up for Valentina. For Miss Shangela. And Adore Delano. All right, we're taking a break next week, and we'll be back for the premiere with Soju and Silky Ganache from Chicago. Uh, before we sign off, I just want to give a big thank you to Roscoe's for making this happen this year. Uh, my bosses, Brendan and Sean, put this whole fucking operation together. They book a bunch of fucking crazy drag queens, put them in hotels, and fly them from across the country. And sometimes World of Wonder just cancels on you on the Monday before the show. <laughs> And life happens, and here we are. So a big thank you to them for putting this on. Thank you guys for coming every fucking week. Thank you to the girls. Uh, meet and greet starts at 10. Performances are 11 and 12, and uh, DJ hit it. Thank you guys. We're going to party tonight, bitch. Let's do it.